Hi, I'm Greg Lang from Michigan State University. We're at our Michigan State University Clarksville Research Station. We're standing in the middle of the NC-140 Cherry Training Systems Trial. This is a very innovative project that has multiple locations throughout North America, ranging from Mexico to the U.S. to North America. And this is the trial site in Michigan. We have sweet cherry trees on three different rootstocks, a very, very dwarfing rootstock, Gisela 3, a dwarfing rootstock, Gisela 5, and a vigorous rootstock, Gisela 6. With those trees on those three rootstocks, we've imposed four different training systems, high-density, pedestrian orchard intensive training systems. So we're focus of this project is to look at the interaction between uh, vigor control within a tree by rootstock and how that canopy of the tree is developed through the training system. So we'll start out, uh, take a walk down this row and I'll show you the four different systems. And um, we are in early May in the fourth year of this trial. So these trees have been developing their canopies for the first three years. This is the first year that we'll have a significant crop uh, after losing a crop last year to uh, cold damage. But this year we've got a nice crop developing. Uh, we're about two to three weeks after bloom. And so we're standing in front of the tall spindle axe trees, or what we call a TSA. It's a central leader tree with many lateral branches and uh, the fruiting unit then on these trees is uh, replicated in a lateral branch. So we have a, a range of fruit populations and leaf populations in this training system. It's a relatively uh, traditional system although we've planted the trees relatively close and there are management uh, techniques that we'll impose on the trees to keep them in this uh, narrow planting space. We walk down the aisle here. We'll come to another training system that we call the UFO system or the upright fruiting offshoots. You can see it's a very narrow system. It's very untraditional. The fruiting units are these very narrow upright shoots as opposed to a more traditional tree shape. So it's a almost a fruiting wall type canopy architecture and that's one of the innovative aspects to this whole trial. We have two different fruiting wall architectures and then two somewhat traditional architectures, but we're growing them in a pedestrian high density type setting. Go a little further. And here we have a very high density fruiting wall system, the SSA or Super Slender Axe. Here you can see the trees are planted twice as close as those other two systems. The trees are grown very narrowly and they're pruned very severely. There's a very specific way that we prune these trees developed by a researcher in Italy. And the idea is to create a fruiting wall similarly to the UFO, but it's being done in a very different manner, uh, which I won't go into at this time. See, very nice cropping. Um, this is the most productive early productive system of the four systems we've been testing. We had fruit on these trees in the second year. And then if we'll finish off with a training system that's a bit more traditional in that it's a multiple leader tree. That first traditional system, the TSA, had a single leader and many horizontal branches. This is a KGB, or it's based on the KGB which stands for Kim Green Bush, a grower in Australia, worked on modifying a training system from Spain called the Spanish Bush into uh, a system that works well in Australia and we're now looking at adapting it in North America. So we have multiple leaders. The fruiting units are fruit borne upon these single upright shoots, much like the UFO, only it's developed in a bush system. The thing we're very excited about is looking at these four different systems here, how they interact with rootstocks, all with an eye towards very early productivity in the life of the orchard and very space efficient. The space efficiency opens new doors for us, gives us the ability to start looking at different covering systems to put over the cherry orchard and protect the trees from particularly rain cracking. 
uh, cherries will crack, the fruit will crack during the last three to four weeks of ripening. And so being able to protect a tree from rain is uh, very important for us here in Michigan, in the Great Lakes region where we have rain throughout the summer. It's one reason that cherries are largely grown in desert-like areas on the west coast in Oregon, Washington, and California. So when you have a more space-efficient canopy and one that comes into production earlier, it changes the economics of cherry production, particularly for those of us in rainy conditions like Michigan. So we're going to look with this trial at two different training, two different covering systems, I should say, over these four training systems. One is a retractable roof covering system, and one is a, a permanent row covering system, or at least season-long row covering system.